Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from around the world. I cannot believe it's already 2013. Amazing how time flies. All right, let's get into it. This first question comes from Lewis from St. Albans, Britain. He says, hey DG, it's Lewis from Friends Book. <laughs> great, great. What a way to start off the new year. All right, for those of you that don't know, I have made this mistake probably three or four times. Instead of saying Facebook, I say friends book. And of course, everybody jumped on it. And uh, now I'm terrorized by the word friends book. So Lewis, I'm coming to Britain and I'm looking for you. <laughs> All right. His question is, do you think that concavenator's bizarre spine could be a muscular hump to assist running or the beginning of a sale? I would love to know what you think this weird appendage is for. Hope you're well and I hope you're having a good 2013 so far. Well, I am, Lewis. Other than your comment about friend's book, my 2013 has been great, and I hope yours is too. Um, Concavenator, what a weird looking dude. Um, man, you have me baffled as to what the function is of that weird triangular shaped pointy thing that's uh, at or about the hips of this animal. I don't know. I mean, it would seem to me that it's almost overkill to be used as, say, an attachment point for a muscle to help this dinosaur run faster. Um, my best guess, my best guess is that that was actually used as a way to communicate. Uh, color is a very important thing in the animal kingdom. It's very important with reptiles. It's very important with birds. And so I would have every reason to believe that color plays a vital role in a way to communicate. Now that communication can be uh, how you're feeling, uh, whether you're a, a grown adult or not. Um, uh, it, it could be used for a number of things to be able to communicate with members of within your own species. That's my best guess. I, I wish I knew, buddy. It's just the weirdest looking thing though. All right, this next question comes from William from Tamworth, England. Wow, a lot of people from England. Hey DG, my question is, instead of thinking how dinosaurs would cope and survive in our environment in the present, how do you think we would do the same in their environment? Thank you for your time and have a good day. Well, William, thank you very much for taking the time to write to me, and I hope you have a good day as well. Uh, this is really interesting. You know, nobody's ever asked me about uh, what humans, how humans would survive back in the age of dinosaurs. I do get a lot of people that ask me how dinosaurs would do today, but this is rather interesting. Um, first of all, I suspect that we would probably, well, <laughs> we'd have to be very fast, <laughs> but let's take out the fact of the predators that would have been living with us. Let's just look at the environment. Other than probably high, having a higher percentage of oxygen and allowing us to be more active than we are today, um, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to survive. Certainly, there was plenty of food that we would be able to survive and, and eat on. Um, there's no reason why we wouldn't. So in all honesty, I think it would be easier for us to travel back and survive in their environment rather than dinosaurs come and survive in ours because they would be living, first of all, with, with dietary things that they may not have been able to digest, but more importantly, they would have been living in a, a oxygen poor environment as far as they're concerned. So uh, for us, we'd kind of be like a supercharge. We'd be able to, to do a lot more things a lot easier. Now, Again, if there were dinosaurs in the environment, we would last about three seconds. Something would kill us and eat us. But for those three seconds, man, would it be cool. All right, Kenny from Adelaide, South Australia. Hey, DG, who in your opinion would win in a fight between T-Rex or Sorophaganax? P.S. I'm eight years old. Well, Kenny, thank you for taking the time to write to me. And I hope everything is going well uh, down under in your beautiful country of Australia. Um, let me tell you this, Kenny. Um, anytime somebody ever asks me a question about who would win in a fight between two different animals, um, it is simply and absolutely speculation on my part. And in English, that basically means I'm taking a guess. Um, my guess has no more bearing than anybody else's. There's absolutely no way of knowing these things, especially when you're talking about two animals that are separated in time. Uh, T-Rex and Sorophaganax, two different time periods. But for the sake of your question, looking at the two, one of the things about Sorophaganax, as best we can tell, is he's a big dinosaur and he is an allosaurid, meaning that he's got longer arms and bigger claws on his hands, which does give him an advantage in a fight. But where Tyrannosaurus rex is concerned, he's so much more advanced. And advanced, I mean brain-wise, his brain is much larger. He does a lot more uh, thinking, I think, than Sorophaganax would do. 
So for, Saurophaganax might be much more reactive in a battle, whereas Tyrannosaurus Rex may actually sort of kind of think things out which would give him an advantage. These are two enormous dinosaurs, but when you really compare what we know about Tyrannosaurus rex, he's a relatively intelligent predator who's a terrifying animal. He's huge, he's got a huge bite force, enormous teeth. I think that would be too much for a dinosaur like Saurophaganax, and in my opinion, my guess, flip of the coin, I believe Tyrannosaurus rex would just be too much. Thanks for taking the time to write to me, Kenny. All right, Matt from, is this, Wirral, Merriside, England in the United Kingdom. Wirral, I hope that's correct. Uh, hello, George. George, hope you're doing well. <laughs> Notice how I began to have an accent. <laughs> I started having an English accent. Hello, George. <laughs> I think that's how you people talk over there. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Matt. Hello, jo George. Hope you're doing well. I'm not sure if anybody has ever asked you this question, but one dinosaur I'm really interested in learning more about is Stig Stigimoloch. So far, all the information I seem to have gathered is that its name means demon river, demon from the river Styx. It's a cousin to the much more popular Pachycephalosaurus. It was a small dinosaur, but it was also an aggressive one too. I'd love to know your insight on this. Also, if it's, if it's only a small dinosaur, but with lots of aggression, do you think that it would be able to defend itself well against carnivores? I personally think it would be pro it would probably stand more of a chance against smaller carnivores based on the information I've gathered. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm no expert. Thanks for reading this. Hope you have a nice day, George. Well, Matt, thank you very much. And let me tell you something. Um, the only time anybody can ever correct you is if you make a, an egregious mistake, like if you said Stygimoloch lived in the Jurassic period. That would be something that I or anybody else could correct you on. But when you're asking questions and using your opinion, it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody needs to correct you. I happen to agree with all of this, except there is one thing and that's its level of aggressiveness. Aggressiveness is very difficult to determine in the fossil record. The fossils can tell us how big an animal is, uh, how long it was, give us a good estimate of its weight, what its diet was. But when it comes to things like being aggressive, that's a little more difficult to understand. Now, I've had the opportunity to study a pachycephalosaur up close, and it was a st Stygimoloch. Uh, in fact, uh, I've got a picture of me where we took that skull and ran it through a CAT scan in a hospital one time, and I was there to see it. And if I have that picture, I'll post it on here. You guys will see what I'm talking about. Um, it's a very odd-looking dinosaur. It's a very unique-looking critter. It has uh, a, a huge array of horns all the way around the base of the skull. And it certainly is very similar to its cousin, Pachycephalosaurus, except for that head is very weird-looking. Um, I, I can only tell you what I know by looking at it, and that is that, yeah, he's a relatively small dinosaur. He probably relied on speed more than aggressiveness to be able to defend himself. He's not going to be built to fight. Now, that dome on top of his head was reinforced. It was very thick. When we CAT scanned it, it was a big, thick piece of bone well before you ever got to the brain. So the brain was really well protected, meaning that dome on his head could have been a very effective weapon. But in my opinion, he and all pachycephalosaurs would have relied on fleeing long before they would have relied on aggression to take a predator head on, regardless of the size of the predator. So I can only tell you this, Matt, it is an incredibly cool dinosaur. There's some opinions out there that pachycephalosaurs may have been omnivorous. They may have actually used that dome head to knock down smaller prey and possibly uh, attack and eat it. So maybe it is more aggressive than we think. But um, right now, my, my knowledge of uh, Stygimoloch is, is very, very limited because I've never had a long opportunity to really study all of it. I was just there the day that we ran it through the CAT scan. We got to see the skull through CT. It was really cool, but that's where it left for me. From there, I flew back to Texas and I never had a chance to study it any closer. Okay, finally, Casey from Bristol, United Kingdom. Wow, you guys from England went nuts or from the United Kingdom, that's crazy. Okay, Casey from Bristol, I have a very large dinosaur tooth in great condition that my flatmate found in France. I can't find anything online that is helping me identify it. It's about 10 inches long, curved, and very sharp. I'd like to send you a picture, cheers. Well, Casey, listen, would love to see it. I'd, I'd be happy to look at it. 
You can email a picture to ask at dinosaurgeorge.com. Again, that's ask, A-S-K, at dinosaurgeorge.com. Uh, send me a picture. I'll be glad to try to help you identify it. There's no telling what it could be. Uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of the formations in France, so I would, I would have to do a little research myself, but I would be happy to do it for you. All right, that's it for now. If you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Fill out the form and submit it. I'll do my best to answer it, but I get a whole lot of questions. And I hope, hopefully this year, I'll be able to do more of these. Until then, practice your manners. I appreciate the courtesy you afford me, and I hope that you treat other people around you with just as much courtesy as you do me, because it certainly is incredibly great to be able to start off a new year with so many polite people. I enjoyed it immensely. For you young people out there, practice your reading. Being a good reader is going to be important. And for everybody out there, happy new year. Man, I should have wore a little pointy hat with a little and then blew the horn. How you like the sound effects? That was my happy new year. You know the Forget it. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everybody. See you on Friends Book.